All right, buckle up everyone, because today we are diving headfirst into the wonderful world of Kardashian excess. Oh, and you know they deliver on that front. Absolutely. Yeah. Specifically, we're taking a look at Khloe Kardashian's recent pumpkin party for all the kids. Mm, interesting. And I got to say, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, another Kardashian party, what's new? Right. But after combing through um, all the articles, social media posts, you know, the usual deep dive stuff. Yeah. It actually got me thinking. Really? Yeah. Like, there's actually a lot more here than just, you know, pretty decorations and sugar overload. I'm intrigued. What did you find? Well, for starters, Chloe's Snapchat story, oh my goodness, the decorations. Okay, let's hear it. I mean, it was a full-on visual assault, in the best way possible, of course. Mm. Giant balloon arches, a happy Halloween sign that was probably bigger than my car. Oh, wow. And enough candy to, like, single-handedly keep a dentist employed for a year. So classic Kardashian extravagance. We're seeing the theme here. Absolutely. But it's done with this, like, calculated precision that's honestly kind of impressive. You think so? Yeah. It's like every detail, every color, every placement, it's all designed to create the perfect Instagrammable moment. Oh, absolutely. They are masters at crafting that picture-perfect image. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of picture-perfect, can we talk about the matching skeleton onesies? Oh, I did see those. Adorable. Beyond adorable. Yeah. Chloe, True, Little Tatum, they were all rocking them. Uh... Even Dream and Psalm got in on the action. Okay, so a full family affair. Oh, yeah. And, you know, on the surface, it's just like cuteness overload, right? Yeah. But then you start to think about it, and you're like, wait a minute. Uh, this isn't just some random fashion choice. Right. There's a strategy at play here. It's marketing genius. Oh, 100%. It's like they know exactly what's going to go viral, what's going to get people talking, sharing, and ultimately, you know, keeping the Kardashian name at the top of everyone's feed. It's branding gold. They're not just selling clothes or products. They're selling a lifestyle, an aspirational image that people want to buy into. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, but it's not all just like staged photo ops and carefully curated aesthetics, right? Well, let's see. What else did you uncover? There's this whole other layer to the party that's all about family togetherness. Okay. Yeah, they do love to emphasize those family bonds. It's constantly being referred to as a cousin's party, which, you know, ties into their whole brand of being this, like, super close-knit family. Right. That's their bread and butter, that image of family over everything, and it clearly resonates with their audience. And you know what? It's not all just for show. I mean, they are a family after all, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. you can see genuine warmth in those Snapchat videos, yeah. especially between Chloe and True. Oh, absolutely. It's like those moments of, like, genuine connection cut through all the, you know, the perfectly arranged pumpkins and the extravagant decor. Yeah, they're very good at balancing that curated perfection with these little glimpses of real life, these little moments that make them seem relatable, vulnerable even. Right. It's like they're saying, hey, we might have all this crazy wealth and fame. But we're still a family at heart. Yeah. And those family values are something that people connect with. It's smart. It's really smart. Because even though it's all, you know, very carefully presented, you still get that sense of, like, authenticity, those little moments of realness that draw people in. Okay, so we've got the over-the-top decorations, the matching outfits, the emphasis on family. The Kardashian party formula. Right. But there's one crucial element that we haven't talked about yet. Okay, I'm all ears. Lay it on me. The slime. <laughs> the slime? Oh, yes. The slime. Every year. It is a recurring guest star at every single Khloe Kardashian kid party. It's a classic. Like, in one of the articles, Khloe even mentioned that they try to incorporate new things. Keep it fresh. Yeah, exactly. But she's like, quote, slime wins every time. And the kids just go wild for it. Oh, though. absolutely. <laughs> there's this video where True is just, like, covered head to toe in slime and she's yelling yes mm -hmm. with this like pure unadulterated joy that's the magic of slime it's true it's messy it's fun it's just pure sensory overload in the best way possible and i think it speaks to something like deeper about what resonates with people mm -hmm. okay elaborate it's like in this world of you know perfectly filtered instagram feeds and curated experiences yeah there's something really appealing about just letting go and getting a little messy. I totally agree. Embracing the chaos. It's like a little rebellion against all the perfection. Exactly. And honestly, we could probably all use a little more slime in our lives. Amen to that. Right? But speaking of things that um, get messy, we got to talk about the social media reaction to this party. 
Oh, here we go. The court of public opinion. Because, you know, it's the Kardashians, so yeah. naturally. Opinions abound. And the whole mix of praise <laughs> and criticism. As is tradition. It's true. It's like clockwork. Yeah. But I think, like, digging into those reactions mm. actually reveals a lot about how people view not just the Kardashians, but also, like, celebrity culture and parenting in the digital age. Okay. I'm ready to unpack this. What are people saying? Well, for example, there was this comment from... Uh, let me see, Lola, mm. who called the party, quote, kid friendly and perfect, yeah. you know, like completely gushing over the whole thing. So team Chloe on that one. Totally. Yeah. But then you've got someone like uh, Jane says, who, while acknowledging that Chloe clearly put a lot of effort into the party, was a bit more critical. What did she say? Basically, she was suggesting that it was all like a bit too extravagant, a bit too much for show and not really about genuine family fun. Interesting. So we're getting that critique of the over-the-top performative aspect. Yeah, exactly. And then there was this other comment that really stuck with me from um, Clara Rodriguez. Okay. She made a really interesting point. She said that she loved seeing Chloe so involved as a parent, which, you know, a lot of people echoed that sentiment. Yeah. But she also felt like it was all a bit, um, I don't know, maybe overproduced. Like almost too perfect? Yeah, like maybe it was more about creating content for social media than actually just enjoying quality time with the kids. Ooh, that's a really good point. Right. And it like gets to the heart of this whole debate about how much is too much when it comes to like sharing your family life online. Yeah, it's a blurry line. And the Kardashians are like constantly walking that line. They're masters of it, whether they mean to be or not. Right. So we've got this whole spectrum of opinions, right? From like complete adoration to outright criticism and everything in between. And that's what makes them so fascinating, right? I think so. It's not just, oh, I love the Kardashians or I hate the Kardashians. It's so much more nuanced than that. Totally. People have such complex relationships with them. Yeah. There's admiration, envy, judgment, inspiration. It's all mixed up in there. And that complexity, that's what keeps them relevant, keeps them in the headlines. It's true. Because even if you can't stand them, you're still talking about them. And in the world of celebrity, that's a win. Yeah. No such thing as bad publicity, right? Exactly. Especially for the Kardashians. Well, they've certainly figured out how to play that game. Oh, yeah. They're masters of the game. And it's interesting, you know, because they've really turned that whole love them or hate them thing into a strategy. Oh, yeah. Like, it's almost like they thrive on that polarizing effect. Totally. And, you know, it makes you think about, like, Courtney Wright and her whole Halloween vibe this year. Oh, yeah, the sensual skeletons, right? Yes, exactly. They were definitely a choice. That's one way to put it. I mean, some people loved them, thought they were, like, edgy and cool. Yeah. But then others were like, whoa, hold up, that's a little much, especially for someone with young kids. Right. And... You know, it's just so interesting how they've managed to, like, create these distinct personas within the family brand. Oh, for sure. Like, Courtney's over there being all, like, rebellious and pushing boundaries. Yeah, the wild child. And then Chloe's cultivating this, like, nurturing, relatable mom image. It's like a good cop, bad cop routine, but for reality TV. Huh. That's a perfect analogy. And it's smart, you know? Because by playing these different roles, they appeal to a wider audience. It's true. There's literally a Kardashian for everyone. Right. So no matter what your taste, there's someone in that family you can, like, connect with or at least be entertained by. Exactly. It's like they've cracked the code of mass appeal. So you're saying that even something as seemingly simple as Halloween decorations can be a calculated move in their overall brand strategy. Oh, absolutely. Like every little thing they do is sending a message, whether they're conscious of it or not. And the media and the fans, they pick up on those messages and amplify them. It's like they're playing this multi-dimensional chess game and we're all just pawns. Huh. It does feel that way sometimes, doesn't it? And it makes you wonder, like, how much of their lives is actually genuine versus, like, carefully orchestrated? Right. Where does the real end and the performance begin? It's hard to tell. But maybe that's part of the appeal, right? I think so. Like we're drawn to that mystery, to that curated glimpse into a world that seems both aspirational and unattainable. Totally. It's like this perfect blend of like fantasy and reality. And the Kardashians, they've mastered the art of blurring those lines. They really have. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that this pumpkin party, it wasn't just a party. No, it was a carefully crafted statement. A strategic move in the Kardashian empire building game. And you know what? 
I'm kind of here for it. Me too. Like it's entertaining, it's thought provoking, and it definitely keeps us talking. And isn't that what it's all about? I think so. Keeping people engaged, keeping the conversation going. Exactly. So we started with a simple pumpkin party, but this deep dive has taken us on quite a journey. It really has. We've explored the Kardashians' mastery of self-promotion, their calculated use of vulnerability, and their ability to turn public opinion into a powerful asset. And we've seen how their contrasting personalities and approaches all contribute to their overall brand strategy, which keeps them relevant and engaging for a diverse audience. It's impressive, honestly, when you think about it. It really is. So where do we go from here? What's the ultimate takeaway from this deep dive into the Kardashian world? I think for me, it's that they're like master storytellers. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like they've taken their lives and they've turned them into this like constantly evolving narrative. And it works. And we're all just hooked. Totally. And it's not just about them telling their story. You know, right, right. it's like they're inviting us to project our own like interpretations and desires and judgments onto them. That's such a good point. It's this like interactive spectacle. OK, yeah, I see that. Where we, the audience, become active participants. We're not just watching. You know? Right. We're commenting. We're debating. They're contributing to the narrative. Exactly. And that's what keeps people coming back for more. It's like they've figured out the secret formula for engagement in like the digital age. For sure. Because it's not just about presenting this perfect image anymore. No, it's about creating content that starts conversations. That gets people talking. And they're really good at, you know, balancing that aspirational aspect. Oh, yeah. With those moments of, like, relatability. Yeah, like, we get to peek into their crazy lifestyle. The private jets, the mansions. But then they also share those moments of, like, vulnerability. I drew in the slime. Exactly. <laughs> Which reminds us that they're human, too. At the end of the day, they're just like us, right? Well, kind of. Sort of. Maybe not exactly like us. But you know what I mean. I do, I do. It's that mix of, like, unattainable glamour and everyday struggles that keeps us fascinated. It's a powerful combination. Because even when we're judging them, we're still, like, low-key admiring them. And that's the genius of their business model. Seriously. They've figured out how to make money off of that complex relationship with the public. And they've built an empire doing it. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. So I guess as we wrap up this deep dive, the big question is... Hit me with it. Are the Kardashians just giving us what we want? Okay. Or are they actually, like, shaping our desires? Ooh, that's a tough one. I know. Like, are they influencing what we value and what we aspire to? I think that's a question each viewer has to answer for themselves. It's But they've definitely tapped into something primal, you know, yeah. that fascination with status, wealth, and family drama. And it's a formula that clearly works. It does. This deep dive has definitely given me a lot to think about. Me too. Like next time I see Kardashian headline, I'm going to be looking beyond the surface. Trying to decode the message. Exactly. Trying to figure out what they're really trying to tell us. And that's the beauty of a deep dive, right? Oh boy. It makes you question your assumptions. It makes you look deeper. And it helps us appreciate the complexity of like even the most seemingly frivolous stuff. Even something as simple as a pumpkin party can spark some really interesting conversations. Well said. So until next time, everyone, keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember, there's always more than meets the eye. And you never know what you might uncover when you take a deep dive. See you next time.